Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page seven. Page seven of Moan Me. We're gonna start out, well, let me go back. We're gonna start out by adding a flap, a uh, top-down flap, and this flap is seven and five-eighths, seven and five-eighths by six. So seven and five eighths inch tall by six. You're gonna score, this is um, one where I'm gonna have a little gusset on the flap, so you're gonna score it at half inch and five eighths, and it's gonna get attached at the top. And you'll see why in just a second. It's going to be a flap over two pockets, and so I wanted to give it some extra space. Good grief, couldn't grab that. This should be centered. And I should have put my little center mark, but I didn't. So it needs to be at three. That's not a pencil. So the center across six inches is three. And this is ten and a half, so it needs to be at five and a quarter. It doesn't matter which way, but I'll do this side. Five and a quarter. Okay. Okay, we're just going to line up those two tick marks. The first score line is what you want to add it to the book to the top of the page on. So you should have one score line revealed and the other score line will be applied directly to the page. Okay, so you can see there is the score line. The second score line is actually running across the edge. So when you're done, you should have a gusset, an eighth inch gusset. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our two pockets. These pockets are four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight. They're going to get installed left and right. Not, not my right pick tool. So I'm, for some reason, I can't locate my pencil. Here's my pick, which has been missing for about half an hour now. I've looked everywhere. It, it's around here. I just can't figure out what I did with it. Sometimes I accidentally throw things away. I routinely do that with my ruler for some reason. Okay, so we're going to open this flap. I'm going to add this directly to the edge like so. So there's the reason why I'm adding that gusset because you've got extra layers of paper that you've got to come up and around on. Same thing, four and a half by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on three sides to make this long pocket. So the, wow, got a lot of static in here. This is what I've chose to go on this large flap right here. It's nice and decorative. Let me set that aside for a moment and we'll take a look at what we're doing on the inside. So the inside, we need to have a pocket liner. This is a little bit of a challenge because you're trying to get it slightly under each one of them. Sorry about that, I didn't ink it. So when we put our glue on, we want to be very generous so that we have long dry time so that we can slide it back and forth before we press it into place.
There we go. So it's got about 16th inch overlay on one side and about eighth inch on the other side. So it's not also not a bad idea to use um, uh, slower drying glue. It's not what I would consider an interactive element, static, so I'm, I would be less concerned about the glue that I use here. Okay. So the next thing is we're going to reintroduce this pattern in half inch strips on left and right. Let me grab it this real quick. It's okay if that's shut. Looks good. the other side. Ah, yay, it landed glue side up. <laughs> okay, again, these strips are half inch. And they're just meant to be a color block to reintroduce the pattern. Um, you'll see when we open page six and seven side by side, it um, it just helps pull the two pages together in a in a full layout. Okay, so the next thing is the pocket covers. It goes this way, and these probably yeah these need to be trimmed to fit. I think I had originally designed them to cover the whole pocket and then decided to add this pattern back in. So we need, looks like a sliver off the bottom. And then a little off end to end. Man, I wish I could find my mechanical pencil. It's got a much thinner lead. Obvious. And a harder uh, lead, so it's shinier on the paper. Normally that's not what you want, but when you're working on black, a shiny pencil, shiny lead really shows up. So we need a little bit more. I'm just going to add that way. All right, that should do it. If I can pick it up. And then we need to ink the sides we trimmed. Yep, that's it. Oh, but before I do that, we need to figure out our magnets. So let me go ahead and get this one trimmed, then we'll figure out what we're doing with our magnets. I should have cut on this side so the pattern would be continuous. Details, details. A little bit more. That should be it. Yeah, okay. So this is gonna close like this. So I think I wanna put a magnet on either side. Um, and here's why. It's best to have your magnets attached to the pocket. If I did a magnet in the center and I had an insert that covered it, then you know there's getting more and more layers between the magnets and more uh, increased likelihood of failure for you. So the only thing over the pockets that's ever going to be the flap. So that's a predictable amount of paper. 
That allows you to stuff as much junk in your pocket as you want. I was going to use a not so nice word, but. <laughs> Okay, so now that we have that down, we get a magnet here, here. I think that's going to be about right. But here's a safe way to do Now I have a lot going. Oh, see, now I've lost my number two pencil. So before we place our magnets, we want to make sure our gusset is standing straight up. So it should be flush with the edge of the paper. It shouldn't be folded all the way over and pulling down on it. It should just be at a right angle here. And that, that gusset also allows us to put a bunch of stuff in the pocket. So I just drew two quick reference lines so that we're far enough away from the edges we don't have to worry about covering the magnet on either side or the mag uh, having enough paper to go over the magnet without it wanting to uh, buckle next to the edge which i've had i've had times where i place my magnet so close that when it just wants to have a little lump hump over the magnet instead of having glue all the way around it. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And they don't have to be in the same position, but it's nice when they are. Okay, now we will close this and find its location. Again, keeping, making sure that your um, gusset on your flap is at a right angle. To do that, I'm gonna turn it this way so I can see what I'm doing. I mentioned a couple of videos ago that we are now selling finished, my finished albums. So if you go under Created by Daphne or Designs by Daphne, I can't remember how she listed them, you can find all the albums that have been completed, that haven't been sold, and um, it may take a week or two to get the latest one um, listed. Sometimes I like to keep it for reference. Um, the first couple of weeks of a video release is when I get the most questions, and sometimes it's nice to go back and look at the actual album, but within a week or two, it should be listed. Okay, there's several out there. We've sold a few since we started, but most of you I know like to make your albums, um, but if one seems especially complex, sometimes it feels, it just makes you feel a lot better if you've got a reference in your hands. Okay, now. That that's done, let's go ahead and finish our pocket. And I messed up by cutting both edges, so I don't think it really lines up anyway. This is the way it goes. Well, I should measure it, because I measured both of them differently, separately, so we'll see which ones fit better. My hands are starting to cramp. I fit better this way. There's always some slight variation when you're using a half inch strip. And that's sort of the nature of color blocking. I try not to go smaller than a half inch because it's really easy to get a wavy edge on paper when it's that thin. What I mean by that is wave like that. Once you get to three quarters of an inch, you don't, that's the end of it. You don't feel that variation. That's why when you're color blocking, it's important to mark the top and bottom because if I put this in with any kind of a wave, 
I'd want to make the adjustment before I put the larger one in. And it happens. I've done it where I've been off as much as a sixteenth of an inch. But if you make the adjustment on the larger piece, visually it disappears. My hands just aren't cooperating with me today. <laughs> There we go. Part of the reason I did it in this order is because when I come back to put this in, I can I can see the border. Looking good. Yep. Just making sure it's inked on all sides. So as you can see, although this is very visually interesting, it's a lot less complex than page six. Um, but you're going to get as much photo storage because of those two large eight-inch pockets. Oops, too much. I could have turned that designer paper down a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with it. So there we go. Now we have this last side to cover. And I was going to use this now that I introduce it, it doesn't look very good. So I might rethink that. It needs to be trimmed. Maybe. I don't want any more red and black. That's too much. We'll have to make do. Okay. Well, we are winding down. I'm going to make some chicken for dinner. I know that's exciting. <laughs> Stay out of that gusset. So you want to go um, measure it to the top square line which is just a little different than what we usually do. But like I said, I, it will allow for us to have a lot of inserts in our pockets. I'm going to turn it around and bring it to me. Oh, you know what would have been a good pattern? I just thought of it. I think I've used it all. Is... this but I think I'm, I'm running too low on it and I've got too many more pages to go so we will make it work with this okay we'll ink this and lay it down and we use this pattern uh, in page six too, so it's nice to reintroduce it again. So you may have noticed by the title of this video that I'm building out a sequence 
I've decided that I'm going to do four and five last. This was originally planned to be page five, and then when I looked at it, I had this, all the leftover patterns were very pale, so it would mean that the first five pages would be blacks and reds, and the last pages would be these beiges, and I thought that looked out of balance, so I'm going to do red and black for the first two, red and black for the last two, or two, page two, three, and page six, seven, and then I'll put the light colored patterns in the center. And so I'm distributing the weight of the patterns. So it will, page four and five will have these light colors. And I'll bring in some dark colors, but it'll be focused on pulling in the light colors as the patterns. So that is page and these pockets are deep they go all the way to four, four inches right so this is four inches wide it's that deep so I'm just going to put those as placeholders I need to finish the main papers before I come back and do inserts um, even though I'm not talking about the inserts right now it'll depend on what's left over I will have it in the cut list it just won't be mentioned as part of this video but it will be under the page uh, once I figure out what I've got left. So hopefully that'll make sense. And then I'm thinking about, because this looks like it's just a little too big, it needs something. I was thinking about adding these two uh, images. And I actually have a total of three cut aparts or something to kind of break this up a little bit, but I haven't totally decided. So you have to go look at the walkthrough for this detail. I'm going to come back to it once I have it in a layout with page six just to see if, you know, what the balance looks like. All right, um, that's it for page seven. I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.